This is the You, Me, and BTC podcast. Cryptocurrency decrypted. Welcome to episode 93. We're kicking off this week's show with a discussion about Gemini, the Winklevoss twins' new Bitcoin exchange that has just been approved in New York. The registration process they chose was even more rigorous than applying for a bit license, and we'll discuss how we feel about such strong regulation. Will it unbalance the free market? Will government approval attract more Bitcoin investors? Then later in the show, you'll get a sneak peek into the way we prepare for each episode. My co-hosts left their mics on while searching for potential discussion topics and we decided to share that recording with you. They'll touch on some crazy drama regarding CoinFire, the validity of news and other information on the internet, and much more. Your hosts today are Tim Baker, John Stewart, and myself, Daniel Brown. Here we go. Hey everybody, this is Tim welcoming you back to the podcast. Uh, I kind of got us all together today to do this podcast early, much to Daniel's Tim, yeah. dislike. Tim really wanted to do this. He was excited. And, well, yeah, yeah I was. Little... I was texting in the shower and everything. It was just crazy. But, so, Daniel thought that I deserved the, the honor to, to bring us in <laughs> like this, since it's just a very special thing for me. I'm Tim Baker, and I'm here with... Daniel Brown. And John Stewart. Last as always. <laughs> you gotta have some like semi not symmetry, some consistency in your life, something that the fans can come back to and kinda of grasp onto. Anyway. Hey, hey, we have hey, some... hey, before don't we talk get about started... them like that, it's patronizing. <laughs> before we get started, I just remembered that we need to mention an interesting art auction. It was the Dustin, right? Is that the creator of Bitcoin Art Gallery, John? Yeah. Yeah, he asked me to mention this. I, I guess he asked you too. This is it's actually really interesting what this thing is. It's He calls it destroyed credit cards and adhesive on wood. So he actually cut up credit cards. I don't know where he got them, but the artist, the, the, it wasn't Dustin that created this. It's, he's the one who asked us to talk about it. The artist is called Crypto Graffiti here on Reddit. And he cut up credit cards and created an image of Dorian Nakamoto, who is kind of the fake Satoshi Nakamoto, the person that everyone... What, what, what magazine was it that kind of went after him because they thought he was the creator and like the, the whole media stormed his, his house? Do you guys remember what magazine that was? It was Newsweek. Yeah, it was Newsweek. And they ran this stupid story about Dorian Nakamoto being the creator of Bitcoin. And the entire media like stormed his house, and apparently, I don't know, he's the whole Bitcoin community got to know him, and they donated a bunch of money to him. And so this credit card art is a picture of Dorian. It, there's kind of an iconic image with him with a pretty weird face. That opinion is not held by all the guests on this show, and we do not mean any kind of personal harm against Mr. I already forget his name. Nakamoto, what the How heck? How could you right. forget his name? Anyway, anyway, the point is there's this cool art piece. Look up Crypto Graffiti, probably on Twitter. He's also on Instagram, Crypto Graffiti, one and word Reddit. if you want to see it. And Reddit, yeah, but I'm, there's no image here. Or I guess it's linked to it, yeah. Look at the image. If you want to bid on it, info at CryptoGraffiti.com. You can send private bids. So it's kind of a weird system, but you send bids. You don't get to see other bids. You send them to info at cryptograffiti.com and maybe you can win. It runs till October 15th, 7 p.m. PST. My favorite thing about it is just the medium. It's just, it, credit cards on wood. It's weird. So check it out if you're interested. All right. Where, where are we going, Tim? What's the story we got to hit? Okay. This story, we've talked a lot in the past about the bit license and this is kind of related to this only because of what the bit license did to New York and why at least I'm surprised this is happening. But the Winklevoss twins who are known for a lot of I guess I, I like call them I like to call them the Winklevi, but you Okay, know. whatever. I don't I'm above your media nicknames, never mind. 
Uh, yeah, the Winklevoss twins, Winklevi, the, uh, they're behind a lot of different projects. You can call them venture. Are they venture capitalists? Is that what you'd refer to them as? I mean, I don't know if it's actually the right word. Entrepreneurs, definitely. Just, they, they just, okay. yeah, investors too. Yeah. So that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Obviously, they're most known for Facebook, so... Yeah, okay. Anyway, the Winklevi have... Stop saying that. <laughs> well, I think for anyone else, I'd just, like, continue doing it, but the Winklevoss twins have now... Their exchange, their Bitcoin exchange they've been trying to get started has been has been approved for being launched in New York, and the name of it is Gemini. Gemini? <laughs> 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 I'm pretty Gemini. sure it's Gemini. No, it's, it's called Gemini. Gemini. <laughs> no, it's I'm Gemini. Just Gemini. <laughs> it's like a star, Tim, or like I don't know. It's like a it's, galaxy it's, or something. It, no, it's one of the astrological signs. It's oh yeah 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 yeah. Because I I know I've seen it before, and I always I never know how to say it. <laughs> you, yeah, you you can tell how how much Tim loves astrology. Yeah, I'm well, just, I can't well, no. blame him for that. <laughs> yeah, you really putting that much blame on me, Daniel. Gemini. Okay, I guess I kind of... I think I like Gemini Jemini a little bit better. <laughs> it's Aunt Jemimi. Yeah, I don't know if it was... It was approved by the New York Department of Financial Services. I'm not quite sure if it was approved just for New York or if it's now like an entire national entity. I'm not really sure what... I, I guess it's... I guess it was approved by New York, but that probably gives it permission to operate in most states. I'm not really sure, but well, no, I think the thing is that they're a limit, a chartered limited liability trust company. I think, like that's yeah. I, I think the point is that that's different from a bit license. Well, that that's definitely true, and that's definitely something we need and to I, talk about. I I'm think just... that's the permission that they're allowed to have. Yeah, like they've been that, granted that title, and that I don't think that has anything to do with only being in New York. I think that's like something that applies no matter where. I okay, yeah. I mean, I, that's that's probably true, and I don't know. Maybe every state has different laws, but they did say that it's actually more strict than the bit license, which means that probably more states would accept it, even if it was a state thing. So. Anyway, the point is, they got this really big approval, and they're about ready to get started. But yeah, what do you think about that? They decide, they intentionally went for some kind of approval that is more strict than the bit license. What does that say? They're looking to fill a different need in the market, or a different, their idea of what the market should have is different than what other, that's not the best way to put it. No, actually, no. I, I think that is pretty good. They they have a different no, idea. No, I bogged down like halfway through. They yeah, they just have a different idea. They're more focused towards making it easier for like a Wall Street thing or introducing it into corporate stuff. And so they're going to be all about making sure it at least follows with. They need to bring attention that it's following regulatory things because that's what they think is keeping Wall Street from getting involved in Bitcoin. Right. That, so they're going to say, well, we w we'll do even better than that because in their view, the regulation is a good thing. And the more regulation, at least to a certain extent, is maybe even better. Yeah. I mean, it, it, they can reach more people. And this is this is one of the really, really big discussions in Bitcoin that we've talked about a ton. It is true that when something is regulated, more people are going to be able to trust it and use it. And I mean, we don't really like regulation, but they do see that it's going to make Bitcoin reach a certain crowd that it probably wouldn't otherwise, in particular, Wall Street. And uh, like I said, we talk about this a lot, but it's I think it's worth talking through through again, especially for a situation this specific and this big. I mean, it is a huge operation if if they got this really strict approval with, with names as big as Cameron and Tyler Winklevoss, if they want to operate on Wall Street, that's a huge thing. And so I, I, I think it's definitely worth talking about if you think it's going to be... I guess the biggest question is, is it going to be valuable to the community, right? Is it 
is it going to be helpful to have Wall Street in the game if it's really, really regulated even more strictly than the bit license? Yeah, I mean, well, I feel like I feel like not having a bis- bit license and having the be an LLC or whatever, whatever it is that allows them to be an exchange other than a bit license. I feel like to most people that's going to sound better because a bit license just sounds like a dumb made up thing <laughs> because that's <laughs> exactly what it is. It is a dumb made up thing. And right. like people are going to hear that. You're like, oh, well, you can trust us because we have been we have a bit license and people are going to be like, what? Really? You have a bit license for Bitcoin? <laughs> I'm sure you do. Yeah. Well, I I can see that. It It, it is a weird name, but I, I also feel like. Well, nobody I mean, knows what weird. it is. It's just too simple. People know what an LLC is. They don't know what a bit well, license right, is. Right. But if you're going to Wall Street and trying to get them to use Bitcoin, they're either going to know what a bit license is or you're you're already going to be a big enough name that they're going to listen to you and, and see. They're going to look up the bit license. If you're able to approach Wall Street with this kind of service and you say you have a bit license, they're either going to know about it or they're going to trust you enough to look it up, I think. So I don't know if that's a huge deal, but I, I do see what you're saying. Like an LLC is a lot more understandable. No, I don't know if it's more understandable, but more traditional. Well, I think than... I feel like a Wall Street person is even more likely to think a bit license sounds like this dumb made up thing, especially because it's so like it's new. Like they're even if they trust you and like they look it up, they're gonna be like, "Wow, okay, whatever." Yeah, yeah, I, I guess it depends. Because it's not like there's been any any hugely successful companies that have a bit license. Like, I mean, I I feel like when a Wall Street person evaluates something, like they're like, "Okay, how you need to prove to me that you're worth my time," and I don't think a bit license is gonna do that. Right. I I, I guess I guess in my head I was thinking like probably a lot higher level person than you are like a CEO or a CFO or who knows what. And maybe you're right. If you're, if you, if by wall street person, what a technical term that is. If you just mean like an investor, like a casual investor who wants to play with the stock market or something, or, or even, even like an investment firm, if, if you're, just approaching them there are tons of those out there and and yeah maybe in that case they would just be like come back when you have something serious to talk about yeah i mean i think there's people who just tend to be a little bit more old-fashioned about things right in general that's i guess yeah maybe a good way to put it yeah i think i agree it's it it is old-fashioned or at least a lot of things that i mean that's the whole point of bitcoin right is trying to revamp the entire financial system because it is old fashioned right now. And you're probably right that in a lot of cases, the old fashionedness would cause them to laugh at something like the bit license. But I still, I don't know if we've still answered the question though, is this going to be a good thing? I mean, not just the fact that they're an LLC or, but yeah, what do you like all this right re- I'm I'm mostly thinking about the regulation. Is it good that they're going to have this much regulation in this big corporation run by these super rich investors? Well, I don't know. I I feel like it's not going to be harmful, I think. I mean, you can never be sure of that, but my thinking is that if anything like it it will get more people like or it will it will make people respect bitcoin more and the thing about it is the fact that this one exchange has become a limited liability trading company doesn't mean that all of the other exchanges are now like under the same regulations as them or that everyone using bitcoin is now like under regulation yeah i i understand that and i agree that for the most part, especially Bitcoin users won't be super affected because unless something major happens, it's, you know, Bitcoin is still going to be pretty free and pretty open and pretty, you know, you can pretty much do what you want with it. One thing that I'm thinking about, though, is people talk all the time about how 
one of the ways that gigantic corporations come into existence and start manipulating and hurting consumers is because of regulation. As soon as there's a regulatory hurdle, somebody's going to somebody as rich or, or some people as rich as the Winklevoss twins are going to be the only people that can leap that hurdle. And once they do, it could be kind of exclusionary where they have already cooperated with the government. They can kind of lobby to get the government to do whatever they want and they can offer cheaper services because they've partnered with the government. But those services are going to be regulated and going to be watched and they're going to be in bed with the government, things like that. I think that's a pretty common occurrence, right? That's what people talk about with like crony capitalism or whatever is where there's regulatory hurdles and that allows companies to become gigantic and not really have a ton of competition. First of all, is that true? Do you think that's, have you heard about those ideas and do you think that could happen here? I understand like the, uh, the logic behind it, but it presupposes that they are going to put more regulations in place because I mean, the same thing that I said earlier is still true. No one's forced to use their exchange. And just because this one exchange is now has, has complied with all these regulations doesn't mean that every single other one has. Right. I guess I'm wondering if, and I, I don't know the answer to this, but I'm wondering if they'll be able to provide, because they have now leapt this hurdle, I'm wondering if they'll be able to provide certain services or certain benefits or maybe cheaper services that, because they are approved or whatever, and maybe they will be able to outcompete kind of illegitimately just because the government says they're allowed to do this and this and this now they'll be able to outcompete the other exchanges they'll get a bunch of customers because they're cheaper or, or more they can do more or whatever but then the downside is that maybe all the transactions are going to be watched or they'll keep way too many records uh, who knows what well, from this article, it sounds like they're nowhere near going to be as cheap as an exchange outside of regulation. And I have a hard time thinking that any company that complies to more regulations than other companies is going to be able to do anything cheaper than them. Right now, the only thing that it seems like they have going for them is like they have uh, FDIC insured or th that it would be FDIC insured if that's something that you care about. Okay. I that mean, seems like the only advantage that they have. Right. I, I Again, I'm, I'm kind of understanding that because you're right. It, it doesn't really seem that cheap. It doesn't really seem really that different than whatever else you, whatever other way you want to invest in Bitcoin. I'm still wondering, though, then what makes it different? What, what is it about this that is going to keep it away from those kind of crony corporation uh, because... things? <laughs> Because there aren't regulations everywhere else on Bitcoin exchanges. Like, that's, yeah, that's they're why. They're in New York. Yeah. The, like, the only reason. No one else is going to be there. <laughs> that's, that's what I was trying to say earlier is that to, like, say that they're in bed with the government and can manipulate things and lobby for stuff, you have to presuppose that the government is going to start regulating this more. Because right now, Gemini is doing something that nobody else has to do. Like, they're. They're crippling themselves in a way that nobody else has to. Like, voluntarily complying to regulations can never... I can't see how that can ever help you to, to regulations that everyone else doesn't have to abide okay. by. Okay, okay. So you're saying the biggest thing is just that in a lot of cases, especially if you're not in New York, there are way fewer regulations. And so it, it's because they're kind of... They're not really being forced to become this... LLC, LLTC, I don't even know. They're, it's because they're doing it voluntarily. And because and that means that other people can choose not to do it, at least for the time being. Like uh, whatever other companies are already exchanges. Uh, yeah, okay. I could see that, definitely. And, and even if everybody did have to follow these regulations and people were illegally not doing them, wouldn't that 
make them cheaper and more efficient? Like, isn't that the whole point of believing in the free market, that it's more efficient to not be regulated? Right, yeah. So you're saying that illegal competition would still exist, right? E even if the government did enforce a ton of regulations, there's still going to be the illegal really cheap at least possibly cheaper than than this yeah i mean the fact that it that it's illegal could make it more expensive like that's the whole thing right. with drugs but right. like the it still could be better though considering how much regulation there might be yeah i mean just just like as an example i guess like like i think one of the things that drives prices up on food that's like organic like certified and all this stuff is that they have like they have to comply to these regulations. I mean, it also takes more work to produce that food or you get less yield from your crops or whatever. But I think part of the price increase is the complying with regulation. But yeah, it says right in one of the bottom paragraphs, it says that Gemini hopes to stand out from existing Bitcoin exchange offerings by emphasizing security and regulatory compliance from day one. Yeah, so I guess I guess we still haven't said what I think we have concluded is the answer to the original question. And that is that, yeah, of course we don't like regulation much, but this isn't going to ruin everything and it will get more people into Bitcoin just because some people really, really want to see that they they've complied or whatever. So I, I guess the conclusion then is that it won't really be a terrible thing and it could even be a good thing just by getting more attention. Right. Even if it doesn't do that, it's a good thing just to see what it... I mean, it's a good thing just to do it because we haven't seen it like that. Well, that's, I'm kind yeah. of interested to it, see what it does. It's interesting. I don't think it's going to do all that much good, but I'd like to see how it works when you start to mix it with other stuff a little bit more. Yeah, and I, I don't really see... I mean, I could see it being kind of pointless, but I don't really see how it could take anybody backwards. I mean, if it's going to hurt anybody it's going to hurt the company themselves because they put all this money in or because they try to comply to this regulation and maybe they just can't afford it, whatever. If it's going to hurt anybody, it's going to hurt Gemini or Gemini, whatever. It's not yeah. really going to hurt Bitcoin in general. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I have a hard time believing that they're going to be super successful just because uh... I think most people who are already in Bitcoin are probably not going to be that interested in using them. And I, I don't think that, like, regulatory uncertainty is the biggest thing keeping people from Bitcoin. I don't know if I completely agree there. Because mostly I feel like there are going to be people who are trying to figure out where to put some of their extra money. I mean, the, the kind of people that not as a profession, but just with a little bit of their extra money, they might invest in Google or something just because they've got some cash and they want to try and invest it. I feel like there are people out there who are going to say, yeah, let's transfer part of that account into Bitcoin, the Bitcoin exchange, whatever. And they're going to want to do it. Honestly, the, the person that keeps coming to mind, we had a guest shoot probably 10 or 15 episodes ago and and he was he wasn't into bitcoin that, that was part of the reason we we had him on was because we wanted to get some beginners type questions and he kept asking well like how can i safely invest in bitcoin or like i'm worried about this and this and this like is it is it like an investment is it can i like buy it on the stock exchange and i feel like there are a lot of people out there who don't understand Bitcoin itself, but if they just hear about it and they have the option to just put some of their whatever E-Trade account or Scott Trade, whatever, if they have the option to just buy a little bit of Bitcoin through standard investment systems, I feel like there, there are several people that would do that. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Rather than, I guess, figuring out what Coinbase is and signing up and, and all that, so... But it's something we'll have to see. Once again, we wrap up a segment with, <laughs> we we have to see. <laughs> Who knows? Well, that's why I like picking these kind of articles that are just news, because then we can just say whatever we want. <laughs> I mean, really, we could have done the entire episode and just said, this is amazing, it's going to change everything. And in about a week, it wouldn't really matter. Yeah, I, I guess another thing we have to mention is, 
it's launching for trading on Thursday, October 8th, which is the first day that you'll be hearing this episode. We're recording on Monday the 5th, if you care. So, yeah, And they've been accepting signups for at least as far as this article has been started. So I don't know how many – it doesn't give us any numbers as to how many people are on there. But uh, I'd imagine there's probably a decent amount of activity. So if if you're the kind of guy who just has to have that compliance, if you really want to see that FDIC, whatever, what do they always say at the end of banking commercials? Like equal housing lender, FDIC insured, <laughs> like FDIC super fast. Approved. Isn't it approved or something yeah, like that? Yeah, I don't know. But if you need all that regulatory, small, fine print, speed talk, whatever, <laughs> check it out. Yeah, that really just makes it for you. That, <laughs> I that's like what that. You I need to start using that fine print, speed talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If your life is really all about that, find speed. Are you tired of Bitcoin dice and ready for something different? Try Lucky Bit, the original falling coin game at luckybee.it. It's the most exciting Bitcoin game on the web. You can bet on five different payout lines and win up to 999 times your bet. You can even use their faucet to get some free Bitcoin. Dice is boring. Play different at Lucky Bit. Check it out at luckybee.it. I still can't like get used to the fact that the 90s were like 20 years ago. Like when I think 20 years ago, uh, I still think it's the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> you can't just like subtract from 10 anymore. <laughs> it's too much thinking. <sighs> Anything new on Reddit? I guess Coinfire made some some accusing article towards Cripsy. There were federal in- investigations underway against Cripsy, which is an exchange. Oh wait, I think I have no. some dark yeah. coin in Cripsy actually. <laughs> oh, that was that what it was? Okay. But I don't I, even I don't know if I even know my login yeah, anymore. I don't, I don't know the password. Is that what it is? I could probably figure it out. Did you see the Cripsy response to Coinfire? That's the that's the one I clicked on first. Okay. Because he's their thing is saying or Coinfire is saying they're federally investigated and Cripsy is saying that, that they haven't ever been investigated. Yeah, this is where I had Dark Coin too. <laughs> it's probably still in there. Whatever happened with Dark Coin, how is it? It's still out there. I don't know. I mean, know. did it ever go up at all? <laughs> I guess Bitcoin has gone down. <laughs> so maybe it's it worth back transferring back. Bit. It's worth a millionth of a Bitcoin. That doesn't sound good. No. I don't remember what it was when I bought it. <laughs> it's actually it's worth seven millionth of a bit millionths of a Bitcoin, but millionths you have to like stick with that word for so long. Millions. Yeah, millions. It just won't quite. <laughs> so wait, this Cripsy blog, they're like saying that people don't even like pay attention to Coinfire. Is that a thing? Is Coinfire like bad? I mean, I don't think we've ever really used them for... No, I think we've had a few times before where like it's come up before that they're kind of uh, a little shaky as far as their how fast they report things. Wait. Maybe we could just talk about whether or not Coinfire is trustworthy. They're under a gag order right now. I'm so confused. What is that? Because I, I looked up Reddit and someone was like, what happened to Coinfire? And they're like, they used to send out a lot of stuff. They used to be hot, be hot shit breaking stories left and right. Now they aren't around anymore. Last story they wrote is from June. Well, which... I just found one from eight months ago that says their domain was stolen. And then there's another one a few months later that they got a new domain. Okay. This one, someone says that they appear to be under a gag order. Investigations of... It has something to do with an investigation of something else. So what's a gag order? They can't... I don't think they can talk, but I don't know how that would refer to, like, everything. When is that from? This Reddit post is from 17 days ago. They posted an article in August, and that's what I'm looking at right now, which is they updated this article about uh, an SEC investigation of GAW miners underway. I don't, I'm just trying to read this stuff to even start talking about it. Yeah. I mean, we could even just make it about 
whether you should trust news places or what or how much you should trust news places, I guess, or something. I don't know. Okay. Apparently they were given an investigative file some or they obtained it from a commission employee. I don't know what the commission is though. But it was an an active investigation of G A W miners. And along so here's with- I'm looking at reviews of Coinfire on Trustpilot. Its average review is 3.1, but it says two on the thing. I don't understand this. 91% of people gave them a one star, and the other like 9% gave them five stars. <laughs> the one guy says they're the National Enquirer of crypto news. <laughs> when Coinfire cannot find a legit story, they just make it up. Maybe we should look at some of the things that they have posted. I mean, just the fact that they're getting in a fight with, like, an exchange sounds really dumb. Yeah. Like, how does a news site get in a fight with somebody else? (laughs) Because they post something like this and then don't retract it. I don't even know why this is something new on the Reddit. Because that was submitted nine hours ago. The Reddit? Yeah. A lot of people in in the Reddit are commenting that Coinfire.io is a good site, and that they're decent at stopping people. And that what I was reading that GAW miners was seems like most people seem to consider it a scam and not just like probably, but I don't know. Well, I don't know anything about the GAW thing. That's just a different company, and basically the head of that company said the same kind of thing against Coinfire. That, like, there weren't any investigations and that he was going to seek uh, legal action against them for an article that was uh, a lie. Like, a libacious yeah. or libel. Well. Libel, yeah. Yeah. Can we, is there any way, how can we turn this into a thing? We've spent too much time <laughs> on it now to give up. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe we could just talk about what we found and just say that we don't really know like, it's hard to tell who's right. That's what we do for every article. Nah. Well, do you just want to get really meta and talk about how you can't listen to other people's opinions about things because everyone always says something different and that you really should just get your own information from your own source and shouldn't rely on other people for your entertainment? Yeah, I know. I've been thinking, <laughs> of, I've been thinking of the funniest way that I could – or, like, the most <laughs> sarcastic way I could say that to make it – Yeah. I mean, as soon as I suggested that topic, I realized that <laughs> – but you can trust us. You can always trust us. We're here for you. At you, me, and BTC, we're a big family. We could maybe just talk about it as... I don't know. Because like, I can't say that like you have to watch out with Cripsy. But I never thought that they were really that much of a problem. I used them. I mean, both of us said that we lost... That there was probably something in there. <laughs> yeah. But also, we didn't have anything in there that we didn't care about. But that wasn't out of like any kind of tried thing it just wasn't worth the time yeah apparently it's related to the investigation of the jw like directly related to the investigation on the miners company we should just send daniel this and make him cut it into something (laughs) 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 i mean i'm not cutting out anything (laughs) wait okay just give him like two hours of recording and let him figure it out just figure it out (laughs) Well, he doesn't have nicotine. <laughs> oh yeah, this will be good. <laughs> okay, now they're now they're saying that it, alleged it's the whole it's the terrorist thing, and that they were sending money to terrorists, possibly. I don't like suspected terrorists, but I, who knows what that means? Wait, who was Cripsy? It just in one. It's talking about documents that were obtained by Coinfire. And about these different investigations. And it just says, in one document, FinCEN, which might have been mentioned earlier. I don't know what it is, though. Began to examine allegedly illegal transactions where money was being moved to accounts connected to suspected terrorists. Oh, no, the the terrorists! Yeah, it's always... What's a suspected terrorist considered compared to a terrorist? Because I thought, do they just use that interchangeably? I mean, there has to be some difference, but... The document was set aside and ignored for several months until recent information indicated potential transactions with suspected terrorists. Sounds like this dude just tried, just got caught trying to get money out without paying taxes on it. I mean, isn't that usually what it is when it's terrorists? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is too confusing to even... 
because there's no documents. They keep on just saying there's documents. Well, yeah, and, then, and that's that's the thing that people have said against Coin Fire that like they never actually like have evidence for anything, any of their stuff. But that makes sense here because of the gag order. But that could just be. So what's like, the gag order? I mean, you said that, but like, what is a gag order? I don't even, I don't know what that is. A gag order, I thought, is normally when someone can't talk about something because of an investigation. Whether it might not be just because of an investigation, I thought it was something like. An unrelated example would be more something like if you tape like a live TV show, you can't like put out what happens if it goes up to some kind of finale thing. It's where you can't talk about something or you're under investigation. You can't talk about things publicly. But I never did find anything that definitely said they were under a gag or just a bunch of people going like they haven't published anything since June. What's going on? And then they updated some random article about or not some random article, but an article about an investigation on a company that was already being investigated, I think, by the feds. And they're kind of related to the guys at CoinFire and its parent company, maybe. And according to their update, which, again, doesn't have the actual full details, can be rated at Coindesk or via... Okay, that might actually say it. But they don't tend to give these, like, specific things that happened but apparently the GAW miners the investigation the SEC has made a public statement on them being investigated and now it just says that the that there is an I'm looking at the CoinDesk article they link to and it just says that the SEC is suing the brother of a GAW miners of the GAW miners CEO amid the investigation so there's all kinds of like legal tape just going back and forth through this because it seems like CoinFire has stumbled into two separate investigations. So, so what is it? They did some. They put an article about the GAW miners. Yeah. And so then, because they put this article about them, they're getting in trouble. They're not getting in trouble. It's they can't talk about it publicly. I think because you can't talk about an active yeah, case yeah, or investigation because yeah. I'm sure like they probably had if they have any articles they probably had those subpoenaed and taken from yeah them. yeah yeah I get that so like they did post something or they didn't post something about GAW no. well, they, they, po they have just a an article that there's an investigation of GAW miners by the SEC okay and it just says they, uh, CoinFire has obtained 1,000 pages of an investigation file from a confirmed commission employee that also has a bombshell draft of potential enforcement litigation action against the company, but they don't ever show the documents. They just say that we have them. So everybody's kind of, everyone's, it's just, I don't know. I was going to say he shed, she shed, but then I end up sounding retarded. So have you seen this canary section on their site? No. It's like, we will update this canary each month for the month prior, and the last month they have updated is July 2015, and it's like, they have a hash thing, declaration, and like, it just says, during this period, CoinFire has received zero national security letters, zero foreign intelligence surveillance court orders, zero gag orders that prevent us from stating that we have received legal process seeking our customers' information. <laughs> it just sounds like... Well, it's from Mike Johnson, the executive editor, but, like, first of all, it says it's supposed to be updated each month, and it hasn't been updated since July. Yeah. Where is this? This is on coinfire.io slash canary. Okay. Now, I saw something about coinfire.info. I want to see if the, if maybe they just haven't been using the .io domain. Okay, so .info redirects to .io. So I just texted Daniel, and he... If, whether he thinks we should just like, or whether how he would feel about us just putting this on, <laughs> I say we should just go for it because just the fact that we're having such a hard time figuring this out is like a demonstration, a live demonstration. <laughs> no, I, I kind of switched about halfway through to trying to talk a little bit more instead of just. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Yeah. So we are doing this for you, the people. A, a live yeah. demonstration. Well, it's not going to be live, but it's kind of. <laughs> It's a recorded demonstration of how confusing things are. It's Even live for how, us. 
illuminating the internet is supposed to be, it also makes it even more confusing because then everyone's just saying, no, I didn't, and then not providing much of any kind of backing to it. And then when a company doesn't publish an article that is a news company for months on end and then says we have not received anything that is stopping us from doing that, that doesn't look good either. So I don't know why they're even doing that. Yeah. The other good thing about this, what we're doing right now, not only are we are we demonstrating this to you for your own benefit, but we're also giving – this is pretty much exactly how we go about doing these things. So this is transparency, right? Oh yeah, people. You can decide if like you want to trust us. You can see that <laughs> we. You can see that we search around for time and we time again kind of for cast our net out into the internet and kind of grab what's there, and then halfway through reading it, realize that something else contradicts it. It's yeah. always a fun time. Well, I mean, that's my thing. Like every time I read something on the internet that sounds like kind of questionable, like I I've said this to people when. When you read something on the internet, you should Google the opposite thing, and I'm sure something else will come up that says the opposite thing. Yeah. And then you have an existential crisis. And like, why does it matter? Why did I even look it up in the first place? And then you never want to learn anything ever again. And Yeah, and you're like, what is truth? Is it even <laughs> a, an attainable thing? What is truth? That, like, their site doesn't even... It's not even clear where the articles are on coin, coinfire.io. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess it's supposed to be a news thing, but, like, there's not even, there's not just, like, a feed on here. Some sites make money by being trashy. We don't do this. If we can't make money just being fair and publishing stuff without being paid to publish it, we don't make money. All right, sources. CoinFire receives news and information from a variety of sources. Often we receive information from sources whom do not wish to be named, and our policy is to honor those requests and keep our sources anonymous without exception. Even under the guise of legal threat, we don't give compensation for tips. So either they're just being nice or they don't have actual sources. Only you can decide. Yeah, make your decision for you. We can't do it. Get over yourself. I hope you guys Hear are getting boy. getting used to this. People probably click on Daniel's clickbait titles for all of our episodes, <laughs> and they're like, I want to know what to think about this. And then we're like, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, yeah, don't make up your own opinions. Just fill that like weird, like that little bit of a question in your mind, asking, like, can we ever know truth? And just say, I can. Hear it, you, me, and BTC. Because these guys have it out for me. And if they don't know what's going on, they'll tell me. But we might actually know what's going on. We might just tell you we don't. That so would be an interesting spin. That's like the opposite of, <laughs> of how it actually is. Or is it? Like we do know. We just enjoy spreading misinformation and chaos. So that Canary thing from earlier was up last updated for July. The last article before the Cripsy one is from July. So it's been months. And the first thing they post is this Cripsy investigation. This I just found out what this thing send the coin if you go on Coinfire, I didn't hear about this, but it's it just asks you for money every single time you change the page. Like it builds up and then if you go to the the website, it just tells you how much you owe for what you clicked on and then you pay that if you want. And I I won't be doing it. But, <laughs> <laughs> and I wouldn't normally pay for it, but I'd definitely not do it now. So I'm on the original Coinfire article about Cripsy, and I'm reading the comments. One guy says, retards need to mind their own business. Cripsy, don't yeah. back down from these scumbags. Oh, and while you're at it, do away with the silly verification and external regulation of your private company. I don't see any references to documents seem... or I don't see any sources. References to documents seem rather vague. Seems like documents were written by Coinfire themselves, a.k.a. sounds like FUD, in my opinion. They, I mean, they have all these scans in here, but stuff's blacked out. And then even this was back at the bottom of the article about the investigation of the GAW miners, the one they most recently updated. Someone says publish the full document from the SEC or it didn't happen. And then January 20th, 2015, Mike says, as we previously stated above, we will be releasing the documents over the course of a series we don't want to jeopardize our sources who are risking the job they have by just publishing something we haven't fully taken the time to redact yet. So, it's been about 10 months. I feel like they don't have them. Unless unless that was 
where they did publish him later. I don't know what's going on with them at all, though. I mean, like, <laughs> you would think they'd at least say something, and they haven't posted anything since July until this article. I can't say that that's, like, evidence of them being just totally, completely wrong all the time and just, like, a scam or whatever. But yeah. that's, that's definitely not a good thing. No. It's a little bit weird for the credibility. Yeah, I mean, it seems more like a case of maybe just incompetence or something. Like, it doesn't seem, like, nefarious from what I can tell, I guess. But Maybe they just went, like, what you were talking about before, where they lost. When did they lose their... That was months ago. And they went to I.O. instead. Is that what you said? Yeah, I mean... Okay. Okay, well, here's a Reddit post from 17 days ago, and somebody's like, what happened to Coinfire? And they talk about the Canary thing that I was saying hasn't been updated since July. And he says that's a bigger red flag than the one in Kijong Dong. SEC subpoenaed them about Homero. See, this seems like all speculation, too. <laughs> Some guy says, Mike was an undercover agent working with the SAC, SEC and FTC. He's been recalled from the field, and a replacement is currently being sought. <laughs> I hope that guy is joking. It's ridiculous. <laughs> okay, somebody says, Quasi Steve says, the reasons for our silence will become clear very soon. So is he from Coinfire? He has a link to a BitcoinTalk.org thread. Oh, this is so this is the guy who posted that was just quoting the thread. Never mind. I lied about that. This is from... August 18th, the reasons for a sense will become very clear soon. This guy's arguing with people, too. Who? That Mike guy. Because then someone's like, the SEC is a public government entity, you can request any document through the Freedom of Information Act, this is not privileged information, this is not an ongoing court proceeding, this is my second and last request, publish this document, or it never happened. And then the guy replies, is that a threat? <laughs> you guys, I don't, people can't make these ominous, like, predictions about when this, this stuff is going to come out online whenever your icon is a little cartoon character. The other thing is that I guess someone on this Reddit post said, "Do I do, so do I get a refund for signing up for their premium service or what? So, I mean, I didn't think it could be a scam, but I guess I didn't think about that. They do have premium, so I, I mean, I'm not saying it's a scam, but it could be a scam. <laughs> We don't want to make any. We don't want to lead you guys in any certain way. We want to be completely. We're fair not going to leave any stone unturned. No. <laughs> yeah. Someone says yes. They also disappeared with money of anyone who paid for their pro membership level. <laughs> and somebody's like, "Twist. Nobody bought a subscription because people just <laughs> paste bin it." <laughs> and someone can confirm at least one sucker. Me pretends he didn't buy one either. <laughs> and one guy says, "Smallest exit scam ever." If he goes to prison, the one guy who's getting investigated said at least someone who signed in as his name to comment on this. Nobody knows, but uh, I'm not worried if they send me to prison. I will start a new coin called Rape Coin that inmates can use to buy commissary with to the moon, which actually is not that bad of an idea. I do think that would sell pretty well, unless he's like a really small. They're just going to take it from him. I mean, does, do inmates get computers or smartphones or whatever? Well, I think they should, John. I really think that everyone has a right to just get on the internet and be able to <laughs> send money around. There's a Let's Talk Bitcoin interview with Mike from Coinfire. This is from five months ago, and it's about GAW. It's like, so, you have do Yes, we have the documents. Well, I finally got back to what I was looking for about <laughs> the domain stuff. This is a post by Coinfire on Reddit. Or, not. it's not by Coinfire, but it's a post that contains a tweet from Coinfire. And it says, well, they, they got their domain returned by their registrar, their old one, which was .cf, but he, they said continue to use .io, but old links will now work. Yeah, so, I mean, they, yeah, they they're, that was, like, seven months ago. So, like, they got their domain taken away, they got a new one, and then it got returned, and that all of that happened before you know, March or whatever, whatever was seven months ago. Apparently, GAW supporters were behind some kind of hack. Supporters? Okay, so it says official GAW supporters behind Coinfire attack. This is just a Bitcoin Talk article. Oh, man, this is getting so confusing. Now there's <laughs> stuff about Paycoin. So I guess some guy's admitting that he did it. Man... <laughs> It's funny, because we talk about how, like, 
the blockchain, you can you can look at all the transactions ever. I feel like that's true of like almost everything with Bitcoin. Like all of this news, like every current event is so well documented because it just gets like anything that's big gets just hundreds of comments on our Bitcoin and BitcoinTalk.org gets these huge threads. But but it's so confusing to look through it all. Like there's so much information, but it's almost like too much that you can't even. This is too much information. We just have to get rid of the internet. Really, I mean it's that's too much what I'm false ad- information out there. That's what I'm advocating for. I really I, just want something, someone to get behind it and just clear all the stuff out for me. This would make it so much easier. I just believe that the there are just too many risks. <laughs> that I think that we should just go back to the way it was. Go back to feudalism. I think that the uh, the way that it is right now, there's just too much freedom for people, too much risk. Well, no. Let's just take down the uh, take down the economic system. Let's just blow up all the credit card companies, and then we'll, it'll just set it back to zero. It'll be fine. No, I mean, we need to go back to feudalism because I don't think people. I think people need to be like working on the farm for their ruler. No, but I they're for their lord, their feudal lord. Yeah, but I like kind of the idea of doing that. But like, but have the feudal lord like at the top of a skyscraper. <laughs> <laughs> I I can see the appeal in that. And also, I just, I'd have to just play the whole, like, I'd just do, like, a recreation of Fight Club in my mind and just do that whole thing. And then i just go with that. And then i just kind of scavenge out in the world. Yeah, I haven't seen or read Fight Club, so not really. It's not that amazing. It's just, it came to me. Yeah, I just don't know what you're talking about, so. <laughs> yeah. We have, like, an hour and 22 minutes. There's probably a lot of kind, though. No, yeah, there is. But I'm feeling like this would probably be a shorter episode. Yeah, that's probably a good uh, idea. It'll be about five minutes from this. Or should we just try to do like a more succinct version at the end, like right now, to just go through like what has happened and then just Yeah, maybe we can recap and Daniel can decide what he wants to keep. Yeah. Okay. So uh to start off what this whole thing was was that we were trying to find something to talk about and we kind of slowly got into a what I first found was a cripsy blog post accusing Coinfire of making a a article that was untrue towards Cripsy, saying that they were being investigated uh, by several different agencies, and Cripsy fired back in this blog post and accused Coinfire of not being and using. He used news and quotes on them and did stuff like well. Not many people take them seriously, but that's good, which is, I don't know, kind of a little bit douchey to do online like this, but whatever. In his defense, I mean, we have, he's not the only person we've seen that's said that. He's not the only douchey person on the internet. That is true. Yeah, well, I mean, a lot lot of people have been saying that CoinFire isn't really trustworthy. Yeah, that was the whole problem, because we thought we were going to be able to do an article about CoinFire not being trustworthy and throw them under the bus and act like we are the best news kind of source, which we don't have to act like we definitely are. We just didn't need to put it out so far for listeners. And problem was then I found a lot of people saying that Coinfire was credible. So it, it's really just a back and forth thing. But anyway, then we followed this thing to an article when we decided to look at Coinfire, we found out that they hadn't published something since, June or was it July? July? July of 2015. The last thing they had done was updated an article about another investigation by the SEC going after the GAW miners, which I'd never even heard of, and specifically their CEO, Josh Garza. But those documents don't seem to have been the, the documents that CoinFire says they got in that investigation or for that investigation haven't appeared but with similar basically for some reason i can't entirely understand the gaw miners and cripsy are somehow related i think maybe the ceos know each other or have done business together and they're both kind of, they're getting in trouble according to coinfire for what you normally think of bitcoin exchanges or uh I guess, no, Cripsy is at a Bitcoin exchange. I guess I should have explained that if you haven't used it. 
Cripsy is an exchange specifically or mostly for altcoins. Both John and I had dark coin in that. I'm not sure if I ever got it out. It might just be lost in there. But they're they're still uh, Cripsy is still going. By yeah, the way, yeah. I think the the losing it is more about for getting login info. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's right. For, and just I, not I might, yeah, I might not be able to get mine out either. It wasn't very much. <laughs> I don't really care. I don't know. Yeah. So they're investigating a different, this GAW miners, and then that's also related to, to Cripsy. And Coinfire isn't making, isn't putting out any new content except an update on the investigation, the GAW miners. So Coinfire supporters are saying that the reason why they can't release the documents is because they have some kind of a gag order. The people who don't believe Coinfire are saying that Cripsy's fine, Cripsy isn't doing anything wrong, Coinfire's trying to stir trouble, and that they should just show the documents because some people are saying the SEC, as long as the investigation or... Some people don't even say that, but I heard someone said if it ha if it isn't closed yet, the SEC, all their stuff is public stuff, and you can just ask for it from the uh, Freedom of Information Act. But I don't know if that's true. And someone else then contradicted them. So that's really what we've been trying to do is struggle through this article or this series of articles and weird things. And then we find other stuff like what was the, the weird cryptocurrency they were using, like Paycoin or something. I think that was some kind of site, but I don't even want to no, look into what that was. I saw that a little bit. I think Paycoin was some kind of thing they sold to to their users and then said they'd buy it back for a certain amount later and then they couldn't buy it back or something. Possibly. I keep on adding or because I don't feel like committing. So they possibly sold these things to people and then possibly weren't able to buy them back. Yeah. So basically, we have no clue what's going on and the internet is just a... There's no more wretched hive of scum and villainy, and it's so hard to figure out what's actually going on. I mean, on the one hand, just the fact that it's a site that's an, just supposed to be a news site is getting into all these arguments with people and getting roped into an investigation to the point where they can't... I feel like that can't be like a thing. Like You never hear about news sites like not being able to post news because of some investigation... And that they never really gave any good answers as to why they weren't posting stuff. But on the other hand, if they're actually, I mean, my 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 first instinct is to say that a news site that's getting into all this trouble with people is probably not doing a good job. But then, if I think about it a little bit more, maybe that means they're doing a better job than everybody else because they're willing to get themselves into trouble to dig up something shady that might be going on. But you just can't tell. <laughs> no, so. We'll just wait. Yeah, I mean, people have speculated that they, it was some kind of exit scam because people bought premium subscriptions, but then not that many people did that it. Seems so it seems incredibly be pretty... petty. <laughs> yeah, that's somebody said on Reddit that must be the smallest exit scam ever. So, yeah, that's basically an overview of our thing. I don't know what Dan, how Daniel's going to edit this. He can figure it out. Uh, I would say that I'm sorry, but he deserves it. Sorry for the pain of editing this, but he deserves that. I guess the 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 uh, takeaway from this is that you can't always trust everything that you find on the internet, including us. But if Daniel decides to post this entire conversation, you will have seen how we actually do things. At least a way that we actually do things. That's I don't know. I mean, pretty. <laughs> I feel like that's. I feel like it's pretty honest because when we started, we didn't know that we were going to send Daniel the whole thing, and it was going to possibly be the actual episode. But he may censor this all. Anyway, good chance it will, it will freak out when he sees and go, "What did you do?" <laughs> possibly. It's like what I told you to have a conversation, a real conversation. But anyways, we give it to you raw, and uh, that's what we always do here. Yeah, we're, I guess you can trust grown ups. You can trust us to do that. But that doesn't mean you can trust us to give it to you raw, whether or not we're actually right about anything, <laughs> or whether actually whether or not we actually give you any kind of useful information that you can walk away and have learned something that you didn't know beforehand. We just do it honestly and raw. So the advice for the week, and that's just like figure out. Don't trust everything on the internet. <laughs> yeah, that and if someone has a different opinion on the internet 
Don't be such an asshole to them. Just be like, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> also, thirdly, plan your podcasts before you record them. Yeah. Also, fourthly, always have like a bunch of stuff to tell people at the end, because then it seems like you put more work into it earlier on. That's true. Well, see ya. Bye. Thanks for listening to episode 93. All of the music in today's show was from John Stewart. Remember to check out this week's show notes at you, me, and btc.com, and make sure you use the social media buttons. We'll see you next Thursday.